Hi everyone, for this month's Nanum of the Month, we're actually going to be looking at the protease for the SARS coronavirus um, that is happening right now with COVID-19. And we're going to explore ways where we could develop a small molecule protease inhibitor that'll fit into this binding pocket um, and help actually eradicate this disease. So today joining us is uh, Mike and Rob, um, and we're going to be exploring these structures together. This is really exciting because there are researchers across the world uh, who work in the pharmaceutical industry, who work in biotech, who grabbed onto these proteins that are necessary for the new coronavirus to survive, to replicate. Uh, and, and what we have here, the main protease, a number of researchers are working hard on this one to come up with inhibitors. There are some known protease inhibitors that work for other viral proteins, such as the HIV protease inhibitor, nelfinavir, that people think might work here. But what's really cool and that we're gonna talk about today is some of the new work to find new medicines that can inhibit this protease. So we're gonna go through a few techniques that people are doing and then actually see what we could then do in virtual reality on the medicinal chemistry structure-based drug design side. Let's start out with just this one in blue. And so over here, this is the new protease structure for SARS-CoV-2 that causes the COVID-19 disease. You know, there's this main area of interest, which is this binding pocket right here. And if we look, uh, we've highlighted a few areas in orange in the putty view. And so these areas highlighted in orange are all the differences between the beige structure which is from the SARS outbreak in 2003, um, and the blue structure, which is from the current COVID-19 outbreak of SARS. Um, and so all of the mutations, that is that the differences between the old version of SARS and the new version of SARS that we have, were not around the binding pocket. So that means that this binding pocket is so important to the main protease of uh, you know, coronavirus. And so all the mutations are in sort of extraneous spots that um, aren't really a part of the main binding pocket here. This is also really important because before we had a crystal structure of the 2019 NCoV2 main protease, scientists were able to take that older SARS protease and use it for modeling to discover new drugs and have new ideas come forward. Because as you said, they're 96% similar. So almost no difference in the important region. You know, some of the, the interesting work that we've seen is actually around a uh, fragment-based screening. And so I'm just gonna turn on uh, another structure here. Um, but what's cool is that you know, this might be a fragment that we could then build off of. And we actually have a few of these that we could all show together. So this is basically three different fragments. In the yellow carbonite coloring, we have one fragment that's interacting over there. In the gray, we have one in the middle. And then actually in this teal, we have that same covalent linker actually happening with that, that same amino acid group over on the side. A company called Diamond has done this fragment-based screen using X-ray crystallography on a large X-chem set of fragments. And they found a number of active fragments, I think uh, 60 or more, um, and they've made them available to everyone to try and come up with the best drugs. And so this is a really exciting opportunity for the scientific community to work together to come up with new inhibitors of this protease. So right now there's actually a crowdsource call out to the community for us to design new structures. So John Codera, um, Post Era, um, you know, UK Diamond Light Source Group, all these international scientists from around the world have gotten together and they're actually posting um, all the results from these fragment-based screenings. Rob, Mike, I propose that each of us design a structure um, using these fragments. And, and so Mike, um, you know, although we're only looking at three right now of the, the 60 total that they put out, um, it, you know, is this like a mix and match type of process where we can say, you know, this fragment over here had some good interactions, that fragment over there has some good interactions, maybe there's even something here what if we tried to combine them all into one singular chemical? Like, you know, is this how we should be looking at it? Absolutely. So I think what experts will do is they'll take those fragments and they'll look at how different ones pick up di different interactions with the protease and they will try to link them together 
They'll make chimeras of the, the ligands. And, uh, you know, they may do it with two, they may do it with three, maybe even four, depending on where they are. And they'll use uh, a number of different techniques to do that, different modeling techniques, different docking techniques. But uh, medicinal chemists can certainly come in uh, with various drawing tools and look at different ways to connect them and uh, and dock them as well, their, their new ligands. And so it's something that in nanome and virtual reality we could certainly do using the medchem tool to take just for example uh, two or three of these fragments and build a new molecule taking advantage of these interactions and so now we should see uh, all of our chemicals that we designed here um, so we got my molecule and then we have uh, mike's molecule and then we have rob's molecule cool and so, yeah, we could see that there was a lot of overlap, very similar structures, uh, but we each made a, a few different variations. So Rob was the only one that put this five member ring over on that side uh, and the only one that really built out there. And then uh, Mike, here's where I kind of kept this, these larger pieces over here uh, versus you just kind of kept that shorter group over there. I think most medicinal chemists would be pretty happy about these properties. Uh, the real question is uh, how easy is it for them to make it and then how well does it bind to the protease. If we look at molecular weight we can see that uh, Rob added on to mine so his is a little bit bigger and yours kept uh, most of the three pieces so it's even larger. So in general if medicinal chemists are able to keep molecular weight below say 500 they generally do that. There are plenty of drugs that are above 500, so it's just guidance. And these log keys, uh, yours and mine, are in a range where people be very happy. Um, Rob's is not terrible, a little on the high side for, for some people. Um, your polar surface area is quite high um, in a range where it might make it more difficult, potentially, to have an orally bioavailable drug. Um, it's something people would look at. Um, the same with the number of hydrogen bond donors and acceptors, a little on the high side here. All right, and so now we should export all these structures. And so I will go ahead and select, uh, this is Rob's structure. I will click the export button and I will export it to my desktop as an SDF. In 1.17, the next release, we will also be able to export as a smile string as well. So now on my desktop, I have all three of these structures and I will be submitting them online to the postera.ai website where they are graciously offering to synthesize the best candidates that people submit as protease inhibitors here. Play around with Nanome, get a good geometric idea for how things fit. Could really just kind of see what you know might work and what might not work uh, by just aligning things up in virtual reality. And looking at it in true 3D and nano, I think you get a, a much different sense of how you're filling pockets and getting interactions when you can do it in virtual reality. So, um, yeah, you know, thanks everyone for joining us for this month's Nanom of the Month. Uh, stay tuned. We're going to be also covering uh, the spike coronavirus structure relatively soon. Um, so, yeah, thanks so much, everyone.